In many of our videos, we mentioned John Hyland, but never went deeper on who he is. Well, we will dedicate this video to explaining the mayor that truly shaped the New York City subway system forever. John Francis Hyland was born in 1868 in the Catskills region of New York. As a kid, he worked on the family farm and on the Catskills Railroad. When he was 19, he traveled south to New York City, where he saw the construction of an elevated train. He asked the worker for a job, and he was hired on the spot. Later, he worked his way up to be a motorman of the Brooklyn Rapid Transit Company, where he made good money. However, that job requires long hours, so he quickly wanted another job, this time as a lawyer. However, while studying to be a lawyer, he was involved in a near accident with a supervisor, and despite his protest, he was fired. This caused Highland to want some revenge, so after he passed the bar, he started his law practice. This law practice helped argue for free transfers in the Brooklyn Heights Railroad Company, an operator of the BRT. Since free transfers lost the company some money, this was Highland's revenge. But Highland wanted more, so he entered into politics. In 1903, he caused great controversy by backing George McKellen Jr. Turmoil ensued in Tammany Hall, and Highland used this opportunity to climb the ranks. In 1917, he ran for mayor and won. During his time as mayor, he refused to allow the BRT and the IRT to raise the fare and bashed the BRT for the Melbourne street wreck. This caused the BRT to declare bankruptcy and to reorganize itself to the BNT, demonstrating to Highland that he needed to do more. In 1922, Highland unveiled plans for the Independent Subway System, or IND. This would be a city-owned subway company, and instead of punching deep into undeveloped territory, IND lines would be built along or under existing elevated lines. For example, the IND 8th Avenue line parallels the IRT 9th Avenue L. The IND 6th Avenue line runs under the IRT 6th Avenue L. And the IND Fulton Street line runs under the BNT Fulton Street elevated. To further entice riders to switch to the IND, Highland designed the INT to feature modern amenities that the IRT and BMT can only dream about. This involved smoother curves, huge mezzanines, and straighter tracks. This would make train service faster, and with its state-of-the-art signal system, can move 50% more people than the BMT and the IRT. However, Highland was too heavy with his approach and with Governor Al Smith releasing papers detailing how ineffective he was at solving the subway problem, he lost renomination to Jimmy Walker. However, Walker continued many of Highland's policies, including the five-cent fare mandate and the IND. Highland's dream of completely bankrupting the IRT and the BMT would come true in 1940, but he did not live to see it. He died in 1936 but his legacy is still very much present in today's subway system. Massive mezzanines, unification, and lack of elevated lines in Manhattan can all be traced back to him. Furthermore, he was responsible for one-third of the subway system, as the IND would not have existed without him. The IND today provided much-needed service to Manhattan, Queens, the Bronx, and Brooklyn, and without those lines, the New York City subway would be much more crowded, as the elevated lines the IND paralleled were at the end of their useful life. However, was Highland a good and effective mayor, or was Highland a petty person who wanted revenge? That is for you to decide.